The name is Vincent, they call me magnificent Rapping for this town like 50 cent Not looking gangster, but not looking innocent Coming to my hood straight deep in the cell Dirty and grimy, straight truth from the mouth I'm like a army cause I don't need help I don't need you, I just need myself And I can rap better all by myself Think back to when you were turning 17. Perhaps you were preparing for your final exams or planning for your school ball. You probably had decisions to make about your future. And you probably had family and friends who were helping you make these decisions. But for a percentage of young people in New Zealand, Turning 17 is not such an exciting time. When I turned 17, they discharged me from six, from child youth and family, and that was it. They didn't make sure I had somewhere to be. I was 16 when I found out that I had to like live on my own when I was 17 because I remember like freaking out because I didn't know if I was going to go to school or if I had to like work. To go to university straight out of care um, was an impossible challenge for me. I, I wouldn't have been able to handle it um, because I didn't have the f focus, motivation, self-confidence even. I, I didn't really think much of myself realising that I initially um, thought that I had a lot of skill and confidence, but it fell through. When I turned 17, it was especially stressful because um, my birthday is in November, and that was right in the middle of NCEA exams. So um, I kind of panicked a bit because I wasn't sure who was going to pay for like me to continue living. Um, with my foster parents. I actually went through like anxiety problems because I was so used to having like heaps of people around me and supporting me and then it went from that to like just being on my own. I was also like quite nervous because I didn't have any family support or anything, like I didn't have any help from my parents or anything. Um, so, but it was good because I found out that I could get in to Dingwall, the Care Independence Programme, like when I left SIFS and they, um, I even went in when I was 16 I think it was and they helped me from then on to get my licence and stuff and then I was just, I just carried on being in it um, when I turned 17 and got discharged from SIFS. Each year a percentage of young people in foster care are discharged to live on their own. At 17 you cannot vote, sign a tenancy agreement, sign up for an employment benefit, sign up for a phone or electricity account, or get married. And yet, these young people are considered to be adults and are presumed to be productive, self-reliant, and fully self-sufficient. It's ridiculous that we have a mandatory age for children who've suffered psychological trauma and abuse. A kid who's not behaving well, who's at risk because of their behaviour, should not at 17 then be pushed out. It's a recipe for disaster. You've got young people that have um, histories that include trauma, that include sort of often frequently breakdowns of, of care placements, um, fractured education experiences, um, fractured relationships with, with their family, all of those things add weight to their challenge and, and grappling their way through that difficult period of time. If you look at most 17 year olds, how can you expect them to navigate their way around this world without any assistance? How can we have that? We, we can't expect that. We can't expect them to do it with any degree of ease. It's somewhat of an arbitrary age. It's inconsistent with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is 18, and that the child or young person isn't just dropped off at 17 and said, you're on your own, make the most of it. That's happened and that's absolutely inappropriate. And we know what the, the consequences for those children are profound. Young people who have lived in care have commonly experienced trauma, abuse and neglect. So what are the consequences for these young people?
the risks of having 17 as our mandatory age of discharge is that just literally it's their 17th birthday so they're really not even 17 yet um, just because somebody's physically turning 17 doesn't mean that they're emotionally or psychologically 17 and often we find that these young people coming through care because of their trauma histories are functioning at a different age level I think one of the difficulties for children in care is they don't learn a lot of things by osmosis they're not given the opportunity to necessarily cook in a house help themselves to things drive a car it's very difficult for uh, foster parents or caregivers to allow someone else to drive their vehicle. And so there's lots of things that people miss out on that just come naturally in, in living with, that happen when people live with their own parents. I didn't have just interpersonal skills. I, I didn't really know the kinds of people that I could talk to. It was really hard for me to develop like relationships and things and friendships. Um, because I didn't really know what a good friendship was. I found that I was confiding in a lot of wrong, the wrong people. The only re relationship I was able to, to develop with people was like partner to partner relationships. I didn't know how to treat any sort of adult. Like if I went to a job interview, I didn't know how to treat them or around other people's family members. I don't know how to treat adults. I treat everybody like my, uh, my, my peers. What I often find is the skills that trip a lot of these young people up that have come through a care experience and have got a trauma history is their interpersonal skills and their ability to contain their emotions. So that can really trip them up because they might get a job and you know things might be going well and then the boss says the wrong thing. They respond in a way to the boss because it, it, it sort of triggers their own rejection stuff from you know, prior experiences. So instead of responding to the boss as, you know, we would generally in terms of, okay, well, I'll just, you know, reframe my behaviour, they might say, well, you know, you've been giving me such a hard time, why are you being so horrible to me? And completely respond in a way that's not appropriate. So then they can lose their job. We know that they're much more at risk of offending, of pregnancy, of drug taking, all those things, of um, mental illness, them, they are an at-risk population. If we don't do it right, then what we're doing is taking people through a, an ostensible care um, history to let them go and have them fall into this trap of, of you know, not being able to survive. Vulnerability is a really interesting thing because we usually re relate vulnerability to very young children. And I know in the Green Paper they talk about taking care of vulnerable children and the focus of being preparing them for under five, you know, the under fives. I totally support preparing children under five, having a real focus and a priority on that age group. The thing is that that vulnerability is still there when you're 17 and you don't have anyone. I mean, it's a, you're no less vulnerable. In fact, I would, I would go so far as to say you're more vulnerable at 17 if you have no one. Often at 15, 16, 17, because of the trauma history, it means there's been some kind of abuse, whether it be psychological, emotional, physical, sexual nature. Younger as children, they might not necessarily have processed all that, the trauma and the impact that that trauma's had on their life. As they become 15, 16, 17, the impact that that trauma has had on them starts to sort of rear its head and starts to interfere with their functioning and with their relationships with others and with just how they feel about the world. So often at that point they might be presenting with being really depressed or really anxious and they might not be linking where that's coming from. The risks are many. Um, we see kids referred to our programme frequently in situations that are really appalling. So we see kids that are homeless, we see kids that have been um, discharged back to families that are continuing to be abusive or continuing to be unhelpful to them developing in a positive direction. And so in the absence of good support when they leave care, we're going to see a number of kids enter um, unhelpful relationships. For them and for others, we're going to see them uh, engage in crime and, and those sorts of activities. I don't think it works. I think it doesn't work at all. I think people who don't have that support, once they realise they need it, 
will end up wanting that kind of wind support, you know, their entire life because that's the only person or organisation that's been with them so long, you know. Because wind stays with you, you know, through thick and thin. It's your best buddy, right? Wind's your best mate. Being in care is, like, tough as it is because you always feel like you're different than other people because you're always, whether you're moving from foster home to foster home or the fact that you have to move out when you're 17, that's tough enough as it is. But then to do all that stuff by yourself, it's very hard. And I don't know like where I would have started because there was just so much to do like when you turn 17. What assistance is needed by the government to initiate a change? What we do know is that it's negligent to not provide anything to a 17-year-old and expect them to, to take part in the world. That's what we do know. So we're looking for solutions and we're saying it is imperative as part of the whole, the continuum of care that 17 to 20 is taken care of, that preparation work's done from 15 onwards. I don't even want to put an age on it. What I want to say is that we need to work with people according to their need and we need to work on that and we have to have the government has to respond with a formalised national program that supports young people through that transition. My thought is that young people need to be prepared for transitioning out of care earlier. That transitioning should start um, around about 15 I believe and it should be a planned process from that age um, and that all the while good assessments are being made about how well that child is transitioning out. You need three years of just life experience sort of like kind of just transition you know um, <laughs> that's all I can say really about that is like you need that you need that continual support over those years. Um, even if they don't take it up straight away, you know, they come back to it. Um, I did, I came back to it. Um, and it's been the most beneficial part of my life, I think. For those who are 17 and have to leave, um, it's not just like an instant, they can instantly just appear at where they're meant to be going. It takes a long time to transition between, you know, living at home and living at well, like, being fully independent, it's a, quite a long process. They need to be able to come back home, you know? How awful for a young kid who's, who's had even a reasonably stable placement, say, say they had a stable placement for the last four to six years of their, of their in-care life, they go out and they can't come back because childhood and families popped another person in that bed. They need to have a family who'll say, we're here for you and you're part of our family for while you're growing up. And after that as well, you're always part of our family. Our belief is that if, if the government is going to take those actions and remove those children and put them in care, that the government has a duty to see that through for those 16, 17, 18 year olds at, at the other end of the system. So those 16, 17, 18 year olds are the same vulnerable three year olds that were removed those years earlier in the government and they're no different, they're just as vulnerable. Young people leaving care without an individualised transition process are very unlikely to thrive, to achieve or to have a sense of belonging. New Zealand is currently 15 to 20 years behind the rest of the world in making provisions for our young people leaving care. It's time for the government to demonstrate leadership and make changes for our young people's futures.